There are a bunch of tough guys at 149 pounds, and today we're going to figure out who would be the 2020 NCAA champion. There have been more number ones at this weight than I believe any other weight class this season. Between Pat Lugo, Sammy Sasso, Austin O'Connor, B. Llewellyn, so many tough guys. So let's find out who would win. What's going on wrestling fans? My name is Josiah and welcome to Fanco Wrestling. On this video series, we've been diving deep into every single NCAA Wrestling Championship bracket this season because we don't know what would have happened at this year's tournament. And because of that, we're just doing our best at predicting who would have won. And I appreciate following along with you in the comments below. Please continue leaving those comments and make sure that if you're not already subscribed to this channel so you can be updated every single day on new weights. Now, as we move on to 149 pounds with all of these tough guys, we are looking first at the quarterfinals and then going into the blood round and then we'll continue on from there. So starting off at the top here, there were a couple of upsets as you look here. Uh, typically, you'd have one through eight. That would be the perfect bracket uh, as you go into the quarterfinals. But you see there are a couple of uh, odd guys in here. P uh, Purinton of Nebraska is one guy, the number nine seed. He beat out Deegan, who was the number eight seed. So not a crazy upset there. Uh, a couple of other things I want to note is that Mahler uh, actually moved on into the quarterfinals. Not necessarily anything that crazy in Brock Mahler moving on, but the one thing, there was an upset over Max Thompson early on. Uh, I had Bryce Andonian actually winning over him. I thought that was one crazy upset over from one young guy uh, over somebody else. And then you have Matt Kalogic moving on into the quarters, who is you know some people's favorite to win the tournament. Can he do it? So let's start up top here at... Pat Lugo versus Colin Purinton. Now, these two have wrestled in the past, uh, most recently at the Big Ten Championships. Lugo has beaten by a decision and a major decision. I don't think anything changes here. That's why Lugo of Iowa, the number one seed, is moving on into the semifinals. Next up, Boo Llewellyn versus Brock Mahler. Mahler, the number four seed of Missouri. Llewellyn of Oki State as the number five seed. This is a match that's sure to turn some heads, sure to be exciting. The last time these two wrestled, Mahler won in sudden victory, Five to three, so it was a tight match, um, and he's beat him in the past two, I believe. So Mahler is actually, I'm gonna have him moving on now into the semifinals, the number four seed. So number one versus number four, nothing crazy there. Uh, then we go down here. Could now Sammy Sasso versus Matt Kalosic. This is a match we haven't seen yet. We have the young guy, the young gun. Sammy Sasu going up against the, the battered veteran in Matt Kolodzik. Uh, a, a, like I said, a favorite to win this tournament. Could he do it? Going up against Sammy Sasu, these two, uh, Kolodzik of Princeton, how would these two do? Now, listen, Kolodzik in the past has played 7th, 3rd, and 5th uh, in consecutive years. So he has been a three-time All-American. Sasso, of course, hasn't yet. Now, the thing about Kolodzik this season is he hasn't wrestled a full season. And he also has had a couple of close matches uh, at the IWA. The reason he hasn't wrestled a full season is because of his Olympic redshirt year. Now, the thing that really kind of turned my head is at EA EIWA, which is the only thing we can really compare this postseason to, is he had some tight matches, which kind of surprised me and just didn't seem like Kolodzik was all there. Now, he, he has lost to couple guys in the past. He's lost to Lugo in the past, although that was in 2017, just comparing wins. He has beat him in 2018. Uh, and, and just like I said, close matches this season, where Sammy Sasso, on the other hand, has beat Lugo this season, although his matches were close with him as well. I have to say that Sammy Sasso is going to pull off the upset. Yes, this is probably going to upset some of you, so please let me know in the comments below if you think this is absurd or if you think Sammy Sasso could actually pull off this upset. That's a tough quarterfinal. Moving on to Brayton Lee versus Austin O'Connor. O'Connor, the number two seed of UNC. Lee of Minnesota, the number seven seed. Uh, here, I don't think, see anything nuts happening. Brayton Lee's a young guy. Austin O'Connor's been in this position before, and that's why I have to say O'Connor's moving on to the semifinals. So your semifinals are set, and now we have to look down here uh, at what is going on. So let me just set these real quick. And then we'll be on our way. And please, like I said, make sure that you are commenting down below uh, 
as far as what you are thinking is going on here. Now, Kolodzik is going to be a tough guy to face down here in the blood round. I mean, imagine going up against Kolodzik in the blood round, knowing that, you know, he's a three-time All-American. Can he do it again? I think that Kolodzik going up against Deegan uh, is going to be tough. You know, Kolodzik just has more power than him. I think he's just a more powerful wrestler, is able to get on those attacks. He's going to be furious that he didn't get into the semifinals. And that's why I have Kolodzik moving on into the placing rounds. Now we have Verclaren versus Lee. And this is an interesting one just because these two have wrestled in the past. And I do have Verclaren actually wrestling in the blood round. He, he's the guy who has been kind of inconsistent throughout this year. Mostly just because he's he's had some close matches, some very close matches. Looking at a match with Brayton Lee, um, a close match with Sammy Sasso. And then he's had matches where he's been kind of beat up pretty bad, like against Pat Lugo. So he's a guy who's just kind of all over the place. But I do think he's he's able to get those upsets uh, like I have early on in the bracket. And I will be releasing those brackets. Now, Verclaren versus Lee, what would happen here? Uh, although the, these two did have a decent match, I think Brayton Lee was uh, more aggressive, even more dominant wrestler. And that's why Brayton Lee is moving on, uh, you know, hurting Verclaren's status at All-American this year. Looking at Brock Zacro of Clarion going up against Colin Puritan. Puritan actually has... He took third at Big Tens. He's hitting his peak. Nothing against Zachary, but I think Pierre is just kind of uh, looking very solid this season. Now he he does have a loss to Zachary actually in the past, a five to three decision, which is something that's able to be turned around. I think he does it here because he's hitting his peak. Puritan moves on into the placer rounds. And then we have uh, Keyson Clark of American going up against Blue Llewellyn. Uh, Llewellyn has actually. His only losses on the year at this point, you know, he's lost to Lugo, he's lost to Muller. Uh, he's just a tough wrestler. He's, he's had a tough season, a better season, in my opinion, than Clark. Uh, although Clark's had a phenomenal season, many, many wins. Uh, look, at, He's on a lot of the most dominant wrestler boards. But I think here with the Okie State guy, Llewellyn goes up against Colin Puritan. And then what happens there? Uh, like I said, he's only had a couple losses on the year. Uh, and I think that kind of puts him... Ahead, you know, even though Puritan is hitting his peak, I think Llewellyn is a little bit better of a wrestler here. And listen, anything could happen in the blood round, and we don't know what would have happened if these NCAA wrestling championships actually happened. There are upsets galore every single year. Now, as far as this other match down here to see who goes for fifth and sixth, who goes for seventh and eighth, uh, we're possibly moving on to third and fourth. Um, first of all, we're going to move Puritan over here into the seventh and eighth place match. Kolodzik versus Lee. Like I said, Kolodzik is going to be a tough guy to go up against. Uh, you got a senior versus a freshman. That's that's a tough matchup at the NCAA tournament. Brayton Lee, his first NCAA tournament. I don't think he's going to be able to pull off this upset. And, and that's why uh, Kolodzik is moving on. And Brayton Lee will be facing Colin Puritan. Now, the semifinals. The semifinals. Uh, one of the most exciting rounds of wrestling. Who moves on into the national championships? Who stays back? Who stays? goes down into the contes? Lugo versus Muller. Now, this is a match I believe can be a toss-up, in my opinion. Just because these two are close close wrestlers, uh, Mahler has had a, a phenomenal season, one loss in the season so far to Jensen of Wyoming, uh, so that's his only loss, kind of a random loss, Lugo doesn't necessarily have those random losses, he has, you know, the loss to Sasso, uh, and, and then some solid wins, looking at a win over Austin O'Connor, and this is a match up until yesterday, uh, looking at similar matches that these two have had, similar guys these guys have wrestled, Lugo where he pinned Llewellyn. Uh, Muller actually beat him in sudden victory. It was a win, but it was in sudden victory. And just because of that, uh, I have Lugo moving on to the finals, and w which is actually a switch up. Originally, I had them tossed up, and Muller was moving on to the finals. But I really think that Lugo can pull that win off. Now, as far as the other semifinal match, Sammy Sasso versus Austin O'Connor. These two have yet to wrestle. They both have losses to Lugo uh, this year, actually. Austin O'Connor, of course, lost to him uh, at Midlands, which was an, a, an exciting match. But Lugo got the better of him, whereas Sammy Sasso just had some closer matches with him. Uh, he's, I believe Sasso is able to score a, a bit more points. Austin O'Connor is a little bit more finesse of a wrestler, um, although he's a very calm wrestler, very very solid wrestler, a very technically sound wrestler. I believe that Sasso is just able to score a couple more points. It's a bit more defensive, and that's why Sasso is moving on uh, to the 
finals. And the other reason is because Sasso does have a win over Lugo this year, whereas Austin O'Connor does not. So O'Connor now moving on down here. Uh, what's going to happen in that match? O'Connor over Llewellyn. Now Llewellyn's got some strong legs. He's got some nice legs he's able to throw in. Uh, Austin O'Connor, as I already mentioned, a guy who's got a lot of finesse. Uh, and it's still able to score points. It can be a defensive wrestler. Um, I think O'Connor gets the best of him here and moves on into the third and fourth place match. And Llewellyn moves down now here over here. And as far as Kologic and Lugo, or, yeah, excuse me, Mahler, um, he's talking about Lugo so much. Uh, as far as Kologic and Mahler, I believe Kologic, like I said, he, he's, he's been in this position before. He's going for his fourth All-American. I think Kologic uh, is, gets, the, uh, gets the win here and goes for third and fourth. Mahler now over here. Now, before I get into the finals match, and, and please leave your comments who you think is going to win the finals, uh, I, let's talk about seventh and eighth place. Colin Puritan versus... Uh, Brayton Lee, like I said already, Brayton Lee is a young guy, whereas Colin Puritan, uh, he I did actually beat him at the Big Ten Championships. Uh, by They're kind of one-on-one -on -one against each other, but I still think this would be a solid match. And I think at the end of the day, though, Puritan has to get the W and go for 7th and 8th. For 5th and 6th, Boone Wallen versus Brock Waller. These two have wrestled already. You uh you saw them over here, number four and five seed, very close in seed and, and very close in rank. Now, like I said already, Mahler has wins over the year to Llewellyn, but I think at this point, coming up through the bracket, coming up through the loser's bracket, has some strong some strong wins, some strong momentum. I think Llewellyn picks up, picks up the victory here, finally, over Mahler. Now, as far as the finals, Lugo and Sasha, we've seen these two wrestle so many times this year. And in the past, they wrestled last year at the Midlands and whenever Sammy Sasso picked up a win in sudden victory. And then this year, these two wrestled again in the duel whenever uh, whenever these two wrestled. And Sammy Sasso again picked up the victory in sudden victory. And then they wrestled at the Big Ten Championships whenever Lugo won 6-4. to four. The, the two matches previous, or um, excuse me, he won 2-1. to one. The two matches previous was 2-1 to one in sudden victory. And then 6-4 to four in uh, was last year's win, or win for Sasso. Now, I believe, first of all, this would be an exciting match. Not going to be a crazy high-scoring match. You, you may see like a 3-2, to two, uh, a 5-4, to four, like a, a slight variation in decision. Nothing high-scoring, but it will be a, a all-out scramble, all-out brawl between these two. They've seen each other before. Anything can happen. This, again, like I said, it, it, it's a toss-up. I think it goes into sudden victory, but who, at the end of the day, walks away with the NCAA title? I believe that at the end of the day, Sammy Sasso takes down Pat Lugo in OT and is able to get that NCAA title. And he becomes your champion at 149 pounds. What a weight. Now, if you're interested in checking out the next weight, looking at 157 pounds, you're going to want to check out this video. I'm releasing videos every single day uh, up to the NCAA Wrestling Championships because they didn't happen this year. So check out this video right here.